So you're not friends with him? Uh, no, no, Scott and I did not see eye to eye. Oh, wow. Oh, that makes two of us. <laughs> My point is, if you fancy yourself a journalist, even if it's for the silly world of professional wrestling, and you have journalistic integrity, people who report things mostly that are bullshit and slanderous lies against myself, if you are friends with somebody, you blew my spot. If you're not friends with them, I apologize. It's okay. But you should probably disclose who you're friends with. I'm not friends um, with I haven't had that. anything to do with Scott Colton in almost a decade. Probably wanted nothing to do with him even longer than that. It's fucking unfortunate that I have to come up here and speak on this when I'm on my time and this is a fucking business. Uh, why I'm a grown ass adult man and I decide not to be friends with somebody is nobody else's fucking business. But my friends, if I fall backwards, will catch me. Scott Colton, I felt, never would have. My problem was, I wanted to bring a guy with me to the top that did not want to see me at the top, okay? You call it jealousy, you call it envy, whatever the fuck it is. My relationship with Scott Colton ended long before I paid all of his bills. I have every receipt, I have every invoice, I have every email. I have the email where he says, and I quote, I agree, to go our separate ways. I will get my own lawyer and you do not have to pay anymore. That's an email that I have. The only reason the public did not see is because when I finally had to counter sue him through discovery, we discovered he shared a bank account with his mother. That's a fact. And as soon as we discovered that fact and we subpoenaed old Marsha, he sent the email, oh, can we please drop all this? Now, it's 2022. I haven't been friends with this guy since at least 2014, late 2013. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't fucking manage a target, and they spread lies and bullshit and, and put into a media that I got somebody fired when I have fuck all to do with him want nothing to do with him, do not care where he works, where he doesn't work, where he eats, where he sleeps. And the fact that I have to get up here and do this in 2022 is fucking embarrassing. And if y'all are at fault, fuck you. If you're not, I apologize. But what did I ever do in this world to, go, to deserve an empty headed fucking dumb fuck like Hangman Adam Page to go out on national television and fucking go into business for himself. For what? What did I do, Dave? What did I ever do? You kill me? Didn't do a goddamn thing. What's your name, sir? Dominic D'Angelo. Fuck the Pittsburgh Pack. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> I made it really clear in Forbes and I just want to make it clear again. Nick, it's not you... his position to make it very fucking clear. There's people who call themselves EVPs that should have fucking known better. This shit was none of their business. I understand sticking up for your fucking friends. I fucking get it. I stuck up for that guy more than anybody, okay? I paid his bills until I didn't, and it was my decision not to. Yeah, but I shouldn't have no commented when Nick first said it. It's my well, fault, I, and if I, I hadn't, it's my that. fault. It's my I appreciate fault. that. I appreciate that. I should have just I'm, taken it head on because you never said it. But I'm trying to run a fucking business, and when somebody who hasn't done a damn thing in this business jeopardizes the first million dollar house that this company has ever drawn off of my back and goes on national television and does that, it's a disgrace to this industry, it's a disgrace to this company. Now, we're far beyond apologies, right? I gave him a fucking chance, it did not get handled, and you saw what I had to do, which is very regrettable, lowering myself to his fucking level. But that's where we're at right now. And I will still walk up and down this hallway and say, if you have a fucking problem with me, Take it up with me. Let's fucking go. Now, what, what, why, why is MJF back in the fold now? How do you both feel about him being around? How do you feel about the time he spent away? All of that. Well, if I may, I'm the one who asked him to come back because uh, MJF's a big star in this company and this is a, one of the biggest events. A year ago, CM Funk debuted here and I thought it was right for the fans. And like I said, for the fans, I thought the best thing that we could do as a company was bring MJF back. He wants me to work with pricks constantly. That's that's what it is. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, two of the top wrestlers in the world, MJF and CM Punk, could be oh. a big match down the line. Sorry to keep bringing this fucking up, but I've never spoken his word, and I don't know how long, so I'm a little fucking pissed off about it. That's fine. When it came down that he was going to sue me, I asked to talk to him. 
He refused. I asked for mediation. It was denied. I offered him money. He said it was not enough. He went ahead with the lawsuit and sued. It's his fucking funeral. I don't care. He shares a bank account with his mother that tells you all you need to know about what kind of character that is. You were always very nice to me. Thanks. I appreciate it, Nick. I'm sorry if I'm a little fucking snippy. That's fine. And want to see great wrestling matches. MJF's the top wrestler. CM Punk's the world champion, the top wrestler in the world. And I think having the top contenders, whoever came out of this match, Tonight, MJF sets up as a great challenger, and now CM Punk uh, is the world champion. MJF being back, a lot of fans were excited to see it, but anytime somebody makes a comeback in the world of wrestling, generally, you get a really big reaction. Am I worried about it? No, not really. Like, we have one of the most charismatic, popular professional wrestlers in the world right here, and frankly, the fans can react however they want. That's what's great about AEW and pro wrestling. We're not trying to tell people what to think. This is a really compelling story. People were emotionally moved. People are calling that a great ending, and I'm really glad people liked it. But the fact is, it was a great match, and it was a great ending, and now we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Is that going to headline Arthur Ashe, the, that match? I'm not going to comment on that. Oh, thank you. I'll tell you why I'm upset about it, because if you're an EVP, you don't try to middle your top baby face. Try to get your niche audience that's on the internet to hate him for some made up bullshit rumor. Really pisses me off. Stepping on your own dick, trying to fucking, you know, make money, sell tickets, fill arenas. And these stupid guys think they're in the receipt of it. Yep, Dominic D'Angelo at freeshows.com. Uh, Punk, last time we were here last year, I asked you about like Terry Funk and his influence, like yeah. the legacy going on. Kind of, uh, and this is for you too, Tony. I kind of like, they're, they're, you do, you've done a great job over the course of AEW and as it goes on. I kind of want to see uh, what you feel about how a lot of the modern talent today can kind of utilize some of the advice and take advice from like guys like William Regal and uh, even like Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone. Um, I know I'm missing, Jake Roberts, plenty I'm missing, I'm sure. But I just kind of want to get both your perspectives on that and how that can kind of go a little bit more to, to help you guys out grow as a company. We have a, uh, a locker room full of pretty brilliant minds, you know, Jerry Lynn, Dean Malenko, Mark Henry. You know, I, when I came back and I cut my promo my second week here, I thought it was, thought it was pretty decent, you know what I mean? You kind of blur the lines a little bit. What's he doing? Oh, crazy Phil. He's going into business for himself. And really, I was just defending myself. But, you know, you, you, you mix that in with attacking Moxley and mention, um, you know, Kingston being the second best Kingston, which is a pretty great line. Um, you know, uh, but our locker room for all the wisdom and brilliance it has isn't worth shit when you have an empty-headed idiot who's never done anything in the business do public interviews and say, nah, I don't really take advice. Who the fuck do you think you are? You know, that's stupid. I'm on a team with Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, and I, I, don't, need, I don't need to work on my swing. You know, I'm not gonna listen to these guys they're gonna tell me how to swing a baseball. Fucking go fuck yourself. But I would like to think, again, in five years, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see the impact of it. Um, there's a chance I'm wrong, you know? We got an uphill battle in a, in a, in a lot of respects. Um, there's just so much drama and turmoil going on. But I, you know, I, I like to believe in the place I work. Um, we do have a very, very strong roster. And like I said, we have, we have a lot of brilliant minds backstage. So if, uh, if, if young talent's willing to actually listen and, and receive uh, advice and information, I honestly think the sky's the limit. You know, there's always gonna be people who think they should be the top guy, wanna be pushed, you know? Um, and I get that. I mean, that was, that was me from like 2008 to, you know, 2010 or whatever. And, you know, I, 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 I always wanted more, um, but, I, I thought I acted like a top guy, you know, like if I missed a flight, I rented a car, I made the town. I didn't just go, oh, I missed the flight, I guess I'm not going to be a TV. Um, I think Adam Cole is, is, is fantastic. I'm, 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 I'm more worried about his health now than worried about if, if his impact on wrestling is going to be, you know, bigger than Scott Hall's or something like that. Like, I, I just want the kid to be healthy because he's a, he's a, he's a sweetheart, you know. Um, I know Eric Bischoff is really mad that I said that, so I stand by it. <laughs> foot injury, as far as, you know, I know you went through, it's three months. That was Awful. pretty quick. That's, you know, and you had sur you had major surgery, you know, that stuff put in and everything. So, uh, the, so, 
So again, what I what I said in uh, promo, I think maybe last week was was true. I I did the stage dive. What an idiot. I must have hit my foot on the top of the guardrail, but I didn't feel it. And you would think that shit would hurt, but when I people caught me, they put me back down, I waited for FTR and I, I'm standing on my foot and it just didn't feel right, you know? But I thought again, maybe I just whacked it or something like that, and then I, I wrestled on it. Blew a springboard, came off the top of like a double axe, like did all this shit. And what I eventually did is, yeah, I fractured my foot, but then I pulverized the bones. Pulverized is a word Dr. Jung, uh, Dr. Jung used. If surgery was supposed to be an hour, it wound up being like four and a half. I got three plates and 16 screws in my foot, and I essentially, have, I have a new foot now, you know? Um, it is 100% but it is a new 100% and I'm, you know, I, every day I, I rehab, but when I, when I started rehab, this is the worst injury I've ever had, you know, um, I had surgery on my elbow, easy peasy peasy, you know, lower back, I could bike the next day, I could get a coffee, I could go for a six hour walk, you know what I mean, it's, I could do something. I was bedridden for two weeks and it was really, really hard for me because I, I really wanted to have this great summer and do good for Tony and sell tickets, draw money, help with ratings. And it all just came crashing down, but that's life. You know, I, I missed out on Forbidden Door in the United Center. I really wanted to wrestle there, you know, and, I, and I, have, I, I have pride in my work and I wanted to carry the title and, you know, carry through the summer and just help grow the business. So it was mentally devastating. I was bedridden for at least two weeks. Uh, I would be dead if it wasn't for my wife. I would also be dead because of my wife if that third week I didn't get out of bed. <laughs> uh, love April to death. I, I, I wouldn't be here right now in a lot of ways if it wasn't for her. Um, it may sound corny to some people, not being able to walk my dog was like really challenging, you know? Uh, and then the, the rehab, like I could tell you how hard and painful it was and grueling but I, I just wouldn't be able to do it justice. I was doing two and a half hours of rehab, plus once they told me I could bike, I was biking my life away. Then I would go to the gym later and lift weights, and I was just trying to bust my ass to hurry up, and not necessarily hurry up to get back, I wanted to hurry up to get healthy, because if I'm not healthy, I'm no good to anybody. It was just, it was really, really tough. I, I, I just think it's, you know, I'm, I'm a little older now, and, it was just, it was a pretty ridiculous, I, I think if I was 23, it would have been a hard injury, you know what I mean? Because I, I literally couldn't do anything, try to get around on crutches up and down stairs, you know? I gotta walk two feet to go to the bathroom, I got crutches, it, it was just, it was pretty bad, it, and it was depressing. Uh, but thank you for asking. <laughs> and, and say his name, he doesn't fucking deserve it, uh, and talk about it, but facts are facts, you know? Name two people that have made the most money off the name CM Punk. I don't think you're there yet. The first one's Vince McMahon. The second one's Scott Colton. I hope you all have a good night. Please be more responsible with the news you get from certain people and uh, just remember we're human beings. Thank you. Thank you, Punk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.